Tommy Matola lives on the road. He lost his lady two months ago. And he about to lose his bitch today. Hello, black hole. Hello, there, lovers. Hello, there, fellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share the Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. Again, today's looky looky will be our Chi Chi Shades. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes you, can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's continue talking about Mariah Curry's The Meaning of Mariah Curry. Eventually, the debate turned to me. One of the guys from Armani, that's one of the dudes sitting at the table, said he couldn't tell if I was part black. No parts of him were black, by the way. Wanye wasn't having it. His voice got up in his high register. Nah, man, come on. We all know. How could you not know? I was laughing, but I also was deeply interested. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't know that Mariah Curry was black. And if she did have some black, I thought it was like way, 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 way down the Thomas Jefferson line, okay? I didn't think it was like her pappy black. I was laughing, but I also was deeply interested. As if on cue, another person from the Armani team chimed in. Dirk, your mother's Irish and your dad's black, right? Like, so what do you think about all of this? All of a sudden, it was like the moment in The Wizard of Oz when the screen went from black and white to technicolor. When I heard Irish mother and black father, my head snapped up involuntarily and turned towards Derek. Our eyes locked. A deeply suppressed sadness I had buried inside since the first painful blow from someone saying I was not white enough or black enough was translated into not good enough. Both rose and began to dissolve and a longing to connect took its place. It was as if suddenly I could see him. Dirk was definitely no longer a random pedestrian. He was close to a Prince Charming. The first moment of connection was so profound. I had created an endless number of romantic moments in my songs, and I had been incredibly sad for so long. Finally, it was if I was actually living a dream. I saw his eyes, enormous twinkling, jade pearls floating in a golden brown pool. It was as if there was no one else in the restaurant or the universe. We began talking across the table. The banter was lightweight, sparkly, and deeply flirtatious. I couldn't recall the last time, if there had even been one, that I'd felt Butterflies talking to a man. The rest of the evening, we talked soft and easy. Eventually, I realized how aware everyone was of our attraction, but I didn't care. This was my night out, and I was feeling the sweetness of freedom, the rush and allure of it all. I knew I was being watched, but to hell with that. Derek was young, mixed, ambitious, and doing his dream job, just like me. Brazen as it was, I allowed Derek to walk me to the car where a driver, a.k.a. Tommy's agent, of course, was waiting. Girl, y'all gonna be in trouble. You gonna get in trouble. Girl, but I like your gumption. I like that you 
lived in that moment because I'm a highly romantic person. Highly romantic, y'all. I'm going to go to the left later on and tell you about this it. This okay. two minute stroll on the pavement was more exhilarating to me than walking a thousand staged red carpets. It was a real moment. I was loose on the streets of New York. The sultry late night breeze blowing my hair and pressing the delicate dress against my body. I actually felt good. Knowing there were eyes on us, my assistant discreetly exchanged information with Derek's friend. I'd been in such a dark and lonely, lonely place for so long in my relationship, I finally had some hope because I had found someone like me who existed in this world. As a child, I used to pray I would meet someone who would understand me for what I was and not feel superior to me. It turns out Dirk hadn't just walked into a room and into my life. My manager knew Dirk really wanted to meet me. He had begged me once to sign a photo for this kid who's crazy about you so he could get World Series tickets. An incident I totally forgot about. That night he and I met, he told me, anytime you need a friend was his favorite song and that he listened to it before every game. He was working on that vagina. You know, I told y'all, they be around here putting cheap dollar bets on female. I'm gonna get that. Okay, I didn't have somebody put a cheap dollar bet on me before. Shit, I done had somebody put a couple of cheap dollar bets on my ass before with eight and bets on my ass. I'ma get her. Right quick before we go further. Can anybody tell me where the reference cheap dollar bet comes from? We started a communication, texting each other. Cute, short messages whenever we could and planning times to talk. Needless to say, I was terrified to talk to him if Tommy was anywhere near but I would steal moments. If we were at the studio or at dinner, I would pretend to need to use the bathroom. I enrolled my assistant. We'd stage an errand and leave in her car and I would talk to him. Sometimes we would go to her house and I'd sit in her modest little living room. Girl, shady, shady, why you had to say that girl? And talk to him in a whisper. I was that afraid of Tommy. You should be. Because what that's called, girl, is infidelity. Because that's your husband. Now, y'all ain't hunch. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. I was that afraid of Tommy. Every call was brief. I was riddled with fear, but it was thrilling. While the energy was definitely exciting and romantic, our actual conversations were on the light and banal side. I didn't care. It was something. Planning and commun- Whoa, nigga. You see that big ass pterodactyl come up on me? That's the bullshit. While the energy was definitely exciting and romantic, our actual conversations were on the light and banal side. I didn't care. It was something. Planning and communicating with Derek felt like someone had smuggled a file into my jail cell. Each time we connected, it was as if I- had worn down a bit more of the bars that held me captive. Every little move we made built toward a bigger idea, freedom. I was scared, ooh, was I scared. The stakes were incredibly high. I'd never tried anything this dangerous before and I had seen firsthand how Tommy could destroy people. He certainly tried to destroy me. As I remember it, the procedure for the covert operation was my assistant and I would tell my driver, a.k.a. Tommy Spy, on my payroll. Damn, you was paying a nigga to, to, to stalk you? Girl, we wanted to grab dinner at the pizza parlor. We'd walk in together and when Dirk came in, we'd give my driver the slip. Derek lived nearby and somewhere we could be private and just chill. 
My assistant would act as a decoy and Dirk and I would duck out together. Sitting at home, I do nothing all day. Mariah is real shady. She give up all the tea for everybody else. But right now, she giving up the tea. Okay, this is the tea right here. Ooh, yeah, girl. And the way that she's doing it so descriptively, I don't have a problem with it. Because, you know, normally I'd be like, girl, you talking too much. What are you doing? Can we hurry up and get there? Right? Like, probably how y'all feel about me sometimes. But because I'm so romantic, you will never meet anything more romantic than a fire sign. That would be Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. And a Libra. That would be me. Because we both belong to someone else. But we can't let it go. Because what we feel is so, so real. Anxious beyond belief. And the shyness I desperately tried to hide washed over me as soon as the door to his place closed behind us. Had I ever been alone with a single man in his apartment or any place before? I wasn't sure. This was all new. Girl, stop it. Mariah, you trying to tell me that you ain't never had the opportunity to be with some ding -a before privately? Girl, you, are you a virgin, girl? I was anxious beyond belief. And the shyness I desperately tried to hide washed over me as soon as the door to his place closed behind us. Had I ever been alone with a single man in his apartment or any place before? I wasn't sure. This was all new. Boo, snitch, don't bike up, man. I took off my cap, shook out my curls, took a breath, and tried to calm and orient myself by focusing on my surroundings. I don't recall many details. It wasn't a particularly impressive place, just practical and neat. I stood in the living room a bit awkwardly, very smitten and still scared. Derek said there was a roof deck on the building and asked if I wanted to go up there. I agreed. Girl, ooh, making love in the rain. I can't believe the joy it brings me. Y'all, it ain't nothing like making love with the, the sound of the rain on the window. I had always thought that that was the most romantic thing in the world. The full moon was bright and warm. Heavy mist covered the night. For this brief moment, I was in rapture alone on top of the city with a man who seemed to have stepped out of my dreams we whispered a few things giggled some more and then drifted into the romance of the moment we leaned in an inch at a time and melted into a warm slow intoxicating kiss i felt an invisible veil of sadness began to slip off of me and melt into a puddle at our feet. Ooh, oh, that is so romantic, Mariah. That is so romantic. Oh, I'm in love with this. And in an instant, the sky gave way and it began to pour. What broke the trance was not the rain, but fear again. How long had we been gone? Derek dashed me back through the wet streets and left me right before the pizza parlor where my assistant was waiting with wild eyes. She ran out when she saw me and we jumped into the limo. I was certainly shook when we pulled up to the tall, imposing black wrought iron gates that led to my mansion. They dropped off the uh, assistant first, okay? You know, Mariah Curry in the back, biting the fingernails, stressed out because she don't know whether the assistant or the driver then called Tommy Mozzarella Sticks and told him what the hell just happened. I was certainly shook when we pulled up to the tall, imposing black wrought iron gates that led to my mansion. It appeared menacing in the dark rain, and in light of what I had just done, Tommy was supposed to be out of town, but once I got on those grounds, I never knew what to expect. Because he a stalker, girl, and you can't predict stalkers because stalkers stalk. I slowly entered my gorgeous penitentiary. All was quiet and not quite as scary. A mercy he wasn't there. 
So at least I didn't have to concoct a story about why I was dripping wet. With the downpour on the roof, a dormant seed of self had been watered and a bit of the humidity of Tommy lifted. I gained just enough confidence to appear defiant. Look, I, both of us, knew we were at the end of the road long before I left. I began leaving in increments and in response, Tommy started to make desperate last minute attempts to get me to stay. He bought me a gorgeous but pointless carnival red convertible Jaguar with a cream leather interior and matching drop top. Oh shit. Oh, now that wouldn't convince me to stay, okay? But I might fuck up before I leave. It sat in the driveway of our $30 million mansion. One more expensive thing to add to the lavish scrap heap that was our marriage. One evening, I was working with two men. I had a significant creative and professional relationship with, whose duty it was to have a mob-like loyalty to Tommy. These three men, to whose wealth and prominence I had contributed considerably, and I were sitting in the kitchen about to have a meal break. Tommy, mozzarella sticks, Matola, began an awkward and creepy little rant about the beautiful car he had just given me and our fabulous... My entire body locked in place. My lungs stiffened. Tommy held the knife there. His boys watched and didn't say a word. After what seemed like forever, he slowly dragged the thin, cool strip of metal down my burning face. I was searing with rage from the excruciating humiliation of his terrifying, cowardly performance in my kitchen in front of my colleagues. That was his last show with me as the captive audience at Sing. <laughs> done so please uh, remember to uh, like share the facebook subscribe and visit uptopbeauty.com now remember this the same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people mm -hmm. that you meet on the way down my naysayers my patron loves you babies be safe and have a good one Peace.